nearly half of Americans are talking to their phones every day. Voice controlled digital assistants like Apple Siri are moving beyond sending text messages and giving directions. But is it the end of typing? Dan Ackerman is senior editor at our partner CNET and is right here in Studio 57. Dan, good morning. Good morning to you guys. So what are the latest examples of how voice recognition is working to improve our lives? Yeah, we're seeing it in things like Siri and Cortana, the version from Microsoft, virtual digital assistants. We're seeing it off phones and in the home now in devices like Amazon Echo that has Alexa built in that assistant. And of course, you're seeing it now bleed into uh, smart home things and cars. But do you still have to talk like this? Most of the time, they don't understand you. Dan. Oh, no matter what you do, you can end up shouting at Siri and it's not going to understand you. The big, the big change we've made over the last few years, especially, is learning sort of natural language uh, as opposed to command language. Early voice recognition research over the last couple of decades have been like device X perform task Y. You have to keep the, the, you know, the sentence structure very formal. Now we've loosened it up, and search engines had to do that first. Google learned how to answer a casual question, and then voice assistants. Can could. you teach Siri to be? responsive to your voice I have not had any success in that but hypothetically uh, you could they're getting better I think I think the uh, Amazon Echo with Alexa is the best example I've seen in that it works maybe 80% of the time whereas Siri and Cortana so, and these other so ones. what's the future of all this I mean, where is this going and how soon I think we're gonna chip away at some of the kind of edges of what we use either keyboards or buttons or other kind of physical interactions to do whether it's entering your password or turning on the lights or changing a channel on the TV uh, you're seeing it in cars in terms of in terms of navigation, in terms of entertainment in the car, sending text messages, you know, and, and you're seeing it in terms of home automation. I go home, I tell the system to turn on the lights, and it actually works. It's really? amazing. What is that? Uh, I use Philips Hue light bulbs connected to the Amazon Echo. So it's two ecosystems working together, and the fact that it works is shocking to me as someone who has tried tons of technology over the years. You know, it's so interesting. We all sit here and text. I, when my kids text someone, they just hit the audio thing and they talk into it in a text. I mean, it's oh, generational. Oh, They're see, already great. doing God, it. I, mean, yeah. I love that. Yeah. But, but do you think typing yeah. will be I, obsolete? I can still remember mm -hmm. typing class, typing the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog's back. Oh, we had the Mavis had Beacon be, yeah. teachers oh, typing. Yeah, because you know. it, that, that uses all the letters. Is as it going to become obsolete? As a writer and author yeah. and long-form writer, I obviously am deeply invested in long-form reading and writing, so I don't think it's going to go away for that. Oh, but we will not. chip away around the edges. And remember that QWERTY keyboard that we all use, that's like uh, from the 1870s, and that was designed to keep the keys from jamming up when you're using the mechanical typewriter. Uh, the fact that that's still built into almost every new device now is shocking all these uh, years later. I use it for taking notes. I mean, in other words, I, I read stuff and repeat summarizing it, and it goes right into using And, and how accurate is it? Do you have to go pretty, back and forth? No, pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And that's the part we're getting to now. Yeah, I'd use that too. I'd use Dragon as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's voice really good. And it's voice, and it's also gesture in terms of home control and car control, where you just go like this. And that's even more sort of, there's more work to be done on that, especially because what of cultural differences. What would that mean, though, Dan? You just wave your hand. What does that mean? Maybe you could uh, play a music track or stop oh. it. Maybe you could turn up the volume. Oh. Uh, maybe you could activate something by by pushing against it rather than pressing a physical button on a remote. I love it. You too. I love it. God, so man. cool. I'm still holding on to the keyboard. Yeah. And the Blackberry. On your Blackberry. <laughs> yes. I know. I got the iPhone too, though. <laughs> and I got the iPad, iPad Pro. Pro too. Dan Ackerman, yeah. we thank you. <laughs>